Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. I'd like to start today with uh, my PCBs because uh, I got my DigiKey order in. Bam! I got all these parts all ready to be assembled onto, soldered onto my PCB board for my quadcopter project. So I'm going to solder that up. Uh, I've got a couple more boards, but I'm just going to solder one. We'll take a look at it and I will explain in more detail uh, my layout and how it came to be and how it came to look just like that. Uh, maybe we'll take a look at my circuit but uh, testing as for the testing we'll have to keep for another time because I don't have a, a proper setup for that right now and I haven't properly laid out my test specs so let's get started. Okay, so it turns out my 3.3 volt regulator has a pretty tight fit inside the little footprint I made for it. Um, I think that was one of the first chips I drew in Eagle and it turns out the footprint is not that good for it. So I'm going to have to fix that in the next revision, but until then everything is going to go on a piece of paper. All the screw ups all going to go on this piece of paper and then I'll uh, have to edit those later. And there she is. That is the assembled board. Save the Siseco XR, XRF module though because I'm not gonna plug that in until I know this board is safe to run uh, so that it won't blow the module. And I'm also waiting on this accelerometer unit from my friend, which I'll go pick up soon. So I've got everything soldered down. Uh, let's talk about the board layout. Okay, so let's move on to the board layout. I've got, well you could see all the parts here, I've got my Atmel chip right in the center and then I've got some power stuff slash battery voltage uh, uh, supervision. So I've got GPIO here, power input on this uh, JSTPH connector. I've got a fuse just in series with the power stuff which is just here, I've got a regulator chip right there. Just a couple caps around it to uh, to give it some better high frequency response, and then right under it, I've got the battery voltage uh, supervision, and that I think goes to an interrupt pin, or I, I brought it out to a pin on the Atmel. I've got the circuit diagram over here, so you guys could take a look at that if you pause your screen. Hey, I actually totally forgot that I actually got. Uh, some of these two millimeter pitch headers for this XRF module so I actually wanted it to mount just nicely in there just like that and so I could just pop it out and test it out with the Arduino so because I actually have to test this thing out before I put it in and uh, this is gonna allow me to just plug and play just uh, pop it in pop it out If it even comes out, there you go. Okay, so I quickly took a look at my schematic for the low battery voltage supervision. And it's basically just a simple op amp circuit. I've got a couple of resistors set up around it to detect the threshold. I, and I've calculated the, the, lower, the lower voltage to be, I think, at 6.6 .6 volts for a... a two cell lipo but if I'm wrong I'm quickly gonna find out or if you guys could comment if you guys know about lipo batteries just uh, let me know in the comment section because I will definitely read that and I will alter my design I will test it out and I will put it into production and I will thank you but uh, its output goes to PR uh, port R of the Atmel chip and port R is alternate function uh, port it's basically just like a 
an extra port that you could use if you don't use an external oscillator. And in this case, I'm just using the internal oscillator of this Atmel chip, if I'm correct, if it even has one. I sure as hell hope it does because I don't see, you don't see a crystal on this board and neither do I. I did not design for that. So the way I kind of chose my board layout is actually I printed off a whole bunch of stuff from the Atmel website, the, the data sheet, and I got all the pin layouts, or sorry, all, I've got the whole pinouts. So I've got the diagram of the actual chip and with my own drawing up on top here, and then I've got the, the whole list. And I basically highlighted the different modules that I will most likely be using. Like I'm gonna use uh, Capture and Compare or, or the timers. I'm going to be using uh, UART. I'm going to be using I square C for the accelerometer, etc. And so I basically highlighted all of those, even though I'm not going to use all of these peripherals, which is crazy. Um, I was initially going to use USB just to have the option of it, but I decided not to design in the, the protection and all that for the circuit. Um, the data and the clock for the programming I also had to choose. So basically, if I go back to this diagram, I kind of taped this this paper to it because it, it's basically like one now. But I went around and I, I marked, okay, I've got, I'm probably gonna use UART here. I'm gonna use these timers for PWM. USB, which I was gonna use, was gonna be here, and I square C. And I basically laid out the board, just, just a quick draft. So I've got my Atmel chip right in the heart of it. It turns out the actual final uh, version, the Atmel chip is actually in the bottom, kind of bottom center. When, I, whatever, I just, you know, kind of brain chip right in the center. That's what I was uh, provisioning for. But this is how it turned out. Uh, according to how the pins were laid out on this diagram, I tried figuring out the, the most effective way to route my board because I don't want I don't want stuff going all the way across the board and cutting my planes and into different sections but uh, it turns out even I didn't even follow this word for word because my programming interface is not up here it's actually basically down over here right this is the programming interface and I guess it's just on the fly I decided yeah this is a better spot to go because all the power stuff and all the, uh, the the battery supervision is going right there. So I actually had two microcontrollers to choose from, both from the Atmel series, the ATX Mega series. I ended up using the ATX Mega C4. Yeah, that's the chip I'm using right now. But my other choice was the ATX Mega A3. And the A3 is actually a chip that is way more loaded. But I saved a buck doing this. But that's not the reason why I got this chip. It's not to save money because I mean this is like a one-off project basically. I'm gonna make one quadcopter and if you guys want to have a quadcopter I could build you one for a price, right? But if this is not for mass production and the A3 chip, the, the other chip, is actually loaded with a lot more peripherals and it doesn't come in a 44 pin quad flat pack package. What I like about the C3 is that it comes in a slightly smaller package and it's it's like the economy version of the A3. So you got all the loveliness of the ATX Mega which is the future of microcontroller technology except it's got just a, a couple less uh, peripherals. You're saving money, you're saving space and it still fits what I intend to do with this board. It still has, it, it has less peripherals, but it still has all the peripherals I need. So that is how I came to decide to use the, C3, uh, the C4 chip. I broke out some GPIO in the corner just because it might be useful, especially in the first initial tests. Like first test I'm gonna have to do is, can I just program this chip? And if I can, well, I'm probably gonna have it output in, uh, uh, to an LED, which is gonna be very simple. Unless I could just, you know, break through uh, breakpoint in my code and, and kind of just go from there. So I guess I should uh, kind of review some of these mistakes I made with you guys. Um, let's check this out. U5 footprint is too tight. Like I mentioned, my 3.3 volt regulator is uh, 
basically the exact same size as the footprint and I need the footprint pads to be larger. Right now I don't, I'm hoping I could get this but basically if you look at that chip right there there's you seriously can't see any other copper on the PCB and you know why that's because that was my fault in uh, in making the footprint in Eagle uh, it just so happens that I didn't provide for enough space for the iron or anything so I'll have to fix that up also I don't even know if you can see it on camera but this little diode here is just way too small if like you can't see it on camera I can't see it in real life I can't see it I can't solder it it was horrible I couldn't see the band so I mean if if this whole circuit isn't working I'm gonna blame it on this little diode and actually it's really small and uh, this circuit will only take uh, 200 milliamps tops and I think this diode could probably just handle 200 milliamps so I'm gonna have to provide for a bigger diode uh, just a whatever just any random general purpose silicon diode and uh, replace it because this one is too small also, uh, yeah, this chip, same kind of same deal with the 3.3 volt regulator, but this op amp could maybe be a little bigger. The footprint is just a little tight, but uh, I, it could be just a little bigger. And the through hole uh, drill sizes here and the pads are also a little, a little small. I mean, I'd, I'd like to have a little more pad space. It'd be easier to solder, but it's totally doable. It was a lot easier than the SMD stuff I did, so yeah so to bring this one to an end uh, we kind of saw how I soldered this board which uh, you probably didn't see much of because of this big magnifier thing in front of my face for the SMD components but you also did get to see how I laid out this board you got a quick view of the circuit if you want a more detailed picture just let me know in the YouTube comments or on my website in uh, just take uh, put a comment anywhere or post or I, I don't know how it works but just try to get into contact with me I will give you the details and uh, yeah I mean uh, this guy you kind of also saw how I chose the microcontroller and how especially for small projects but the whole board layout is driven basically by the microcontroller choice because the microcontroller like the backbone chip determines where everything is because uh, like you, just depending on which direction the pins are and uh, in the orientation of the chip itself that you're gonna have on the board that basically determine where all my parts are doesn't matter and it, it didn't really matter for the the quadcopter I foresee because like I'm just gonna mount it it's gonna go right on top and then there's gonna be wires all over anyways uh, just typical quadcopter wiring going to the different brushless motors and to the power uh, the battery so yeah check that out BAM! So I was Justin St. Amon from Tin Man Electronics. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned if you want to hear more about uh, quadcopter stuff or electronics engineering. I, as a goal, try to show you what engineering is all about because it's not just an office job. It's doing some fun stuff in here too. So comment on the YouTube video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy what I do. Uh, I've got a website, www.tinmanelectronics.com, where I post my videos, and hopefully I will be posting some more content too. That's engineering.